Ben Shapiro, Douglas Murray, Jordan Peterson, Rupert Murdoch, Talk TV, and Piers Morgan. All of the names that I've just mentioned have links to the Israeli political and military establishment which is attempting to push the Palestinians of Gaza into the Sinai Desert of Egypt. These individuals are seeking relentlessly to fold Palestine into their own synthetic world view. We've seen a sophisticated campaign in this country to replace the class war with the culture war. Essentially, Palestine is now being integrated by those same forces into this trademark of wokeness. But let me tell you something clearly. Palestine is a real war, not your manufactured, broadsheet-centered, mainstream media-supported culture war. You talk about cancel culture, there is no people on the face of this earth who have been more cancelled in human history than the Palestinians. The Palestinians have been cancelled out of all existence. People like Douglas Murray, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro and Piers Morgan moan about people challenging their views. Isn't it so ironic to see those that have bored our ears off about their own supposed cancel culture celebrating cancel culture which has genocidal ramifications on children in Gaza. But let me tell you something. The Palestinian struggle against settler colonialism is over a hundred years old. It preceded you becoming a twinkle in the eye of your parents. Palestine will never die. It will live beyond you and all of your attempts to disfigure the truth. They're losing the propaganda war, but they have tried. In an article which Ben Shapiro has had wiped from the internet but is thankfully still available due to the Wayback Machine, Ben Shapiro said the following, If you believe that Israel has a right to exist, then you must allow Israel to transfer the Palestinians and Israeli Arabs from Judea, Samaria, Gaza and Israel proper. Time to stop being squeamish. Transfer is not genocide. So let's look at the trajectory of Ben Shapiro. He was employed as a Shillman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Robert Shillman, the person who funded his position, was on the board of the Friends of the IDF at the same time and funds illegal settlements in occupied Palestine. Not only was Ben Shapiro a Shillman Fellow at the David Horowitz Freedom Center, so was Tommy Robinson. Later, Ben Shapiro went on to co-found The Daily Wire with Jeremy Bowring. Both of those people worked to set up the YouTube channel, the Prager University, for Israel lobbyist Dennis Prager. While doing that, they worked directly under the leadership of Marissa Strait, who was a former Unit 8200 military intelligence agent. Jordan Peterson is employed by The Daily Wire. Where is his humanity when looking upon the Palestinians? Give them hell, Netanyahu. Those were your words. Did Netanyahu give the Palestinians enough hell yet? You call yourself a Christian, Jordan Peterson? How could you accept the bombing of hospitals, churches, and schools in your name? One of the key ways in which they are trying to push back against the force of reality with what is happening in Gaza has been Talk TV. But what is Talk TV? This patriotic alternative to cancel culture. Well, it was founded by Rupert Murdoch and is part of his News Corps empire. But there's something about Rupert Murdoch's relationship with Israeli intelligence that the world should know. In 1988, Rupert Murdoch helped to found an organization that would go on to be called the NDS Group at Wiseman Institute in Israel. It was later alleged that this organization, the NDS Group, which became a subsidiary of News Corp, had hacked the communications of rivals and hacked the channels of rivals and placed them for free on the internet in the early 2000s. Not only were Rupert Murdoch's two sons on the board of the NDS Group, there were also some more interesting figures behind them. The CEO of NDS Group was Abe Peled. Abe Peled was a technical officer in the Israeli Infantry Corps. The head of security was Reuven Hazak. Reuven Hazak 
was the deputy director of Israel's internal intelligence agency, Shin Bet. The chief technical director was Yossi Tesoria, who was a member of a settler group which attempted to blow up Al-Aqsa. So what you have here is an Israeli company owned by Rupert Murdoch, staffed by former Israeli military and intelligence personnel, which stands accused of hacking rivals in order to benefit Rupert Murdoch's media empire. Murdoch's charitable arm, the News Corps Foundation, donated money in 2007 to the Jerusalem Foundation. The Jerusalem Foundation builds in illegal settlements in Sheikh Jarrah and East Jerusalem. We also know that Murdoch's sons have a close relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. In addition to that, Rupert Murdoch was on the board of Genie Energy, an oil and gas company, when it had contracts in Israeli-occupied Syrian Jolan Heights. Sam Kiley, the Africa correspondent at the Times newspaper, resigned from his position, claiming that Murdoch's close friendship with Ariel Sharon and investments in Israel prevented the Times newspaper from being able to cover Palestine and Israel in an objective way. Any information which is coming through Talk TV or other Murdoch-owned news channels or papers is likely to be deeply biased in the direction of Israel. That brings us to the question of Piers Morgan. Now, Piers Morgan goes to great lengths to state his own objectivity and neutrality on this question. On the issue whether I'm pro-Israel, I, I don't have a horse in this race. But it is my conviction that his personal relationships with key Israel lobbyists and fundraisers for the builders of settlements would cast a serious question mark on that neutrality. In the past, Piers Morgan has fronted fundraising campaigns for a charity founded by former head of the Labour Friends of Israel, Jonathan Mendelssohn, and a charity which is also run by key Israel lobbyist Trevor Chin. Trevor Chin is an executive director of BICOM, Israel's largest lobby group in this country. In the midst of his coverage of Israel's genocidal war on Gaza, Piers Morgan had a cozy sushi meal in New York with Nicola Mendelssohn, the wife of Jonathan Mendelssohn. Nicola Mendelssohn, as part of Facebook, headed the procurement of Onavo. Onavo, an Israeli mobile analytics company which was founded by veterans of Unit 8200 military intelligence in Israel. This organization then set about, through Facebook, monitoring users out of app behavior. It was found that Anavo's activity on behalf of Facebook violated the privacy of Facebook users and was then used to inform Facebook's purchase of WhatsApp. For that reason, Facebook were then required to shut down Anavo. Catherine Jenkins, the other woman seated next to Pierce Morgan, has also been credited as fundraising for the JNF, the largest settlement building body in Palestine. And its patrons include not only Tony Blair, but also Isaac Herzog, the president of Israel, and Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel. But do you know who else is on the board of the JNF? None other than Alan Mendoza, the key figure at the Henry Jackson Society. Now, the Henry Jackson Society was founded with a statement signed by James Wolseley, the former director of the CIA, by Richard Dearlove, the former head of MI6 at the time of the Iraq War, by Erwin Stetzler, who is the right-hand man to Rupert Murdoch. The Henry Jackson Society was essential to the development of PREVENT, which spies, mainly on Muslim children, into a public statutory duty. Another director of the Henry Jackson Society is none other than William Shawcross, who of course went on to head the Charity Commission and lead a witch hunt against Muslim charities. Douglas Murray worked for many years for the Henry Jackson Society, proselytizing for the war on terror and generally making things harder across the board for Muslims in Europe. But where did the funding for this Douglas Murray organization, the Henry Jackson Society, come from? Well, one of its funders is the Hertog Foundation. The Hertog Foundation also funds the Er David Foundation. 
key settler group in East Jerusalem. And also, the Hertog Foundation funds the Friends of the IDF and the David Horowitz Freedom Center, which employed Tommy Robinson and Katie Hopkins. So the organization that Douglas Murray worked for for many years shared funders with the Friends of the IDF, Illegal Settlements, and Tommy Robinson. And Douglas Murray can do as many appearances as he wants on the edge of Gaza embedded with Israeli soldiers. The vast majority of people viewing these videos understand him to be Tommy Robinson with an Eton education. Despite attempting to depict themselves as victims of cancel culture relentlessly, these very same figures are now relishing in the victimhood of Palestinians. They are relishing in the victimizing of some of the poorest people in the world inside a concentration camp. And at the same time, Israel is attempting to portray itself as a victim while being the hyper aggressor, while being the occupier, while being the ethnic cleanser of Palestine. These are the very same people backing up the Israeli defense minister, Yoav Gallant, when he refers to people of Gaza as human animals. They are the very same people backing up Benjamin Netanyahu as he quotes biblical sources with genocidal ramifications. And as their desperation becomes more and more apparent, we will see more outbursts and lashing out of those that support Israel's genocidal war on the Palestinians. Just remember who is on the right side of history here. Mainstream monopoly on information is breaking. And one of the symptoms of that process is the development of platforms like Double Down News. So it's absolutely vital that if we want to build an alternative media, which is people, not power centered, then we must do what we can to support platforms like Double Down News. So sign up to the Patreon now.